this was an opportunity to get out onto the lake and uh, in a very fascinating boat. I think what they're doing here is an amazing thing. We really need to do something about the health of this lake and, uh, and the research is the first step. But the real nature of the problem in Lake Winnipeg is something that a lot of people don't understand. The lake has variously been described as dead or dying or polluted or contaminated or sick and none of those descriptions are accurate. So what is the real problem in the lake? When these massive algae blooms die in the, in the fall time, they sink to the bottom. And when they're sitting on the bottom over the winter, they start to decompose. And the bacteria that are involved in the decomposition process are using up the oxygen, in dissolved oxygen in the water. And the little creatures that they're going after there, that live down there, become starved of oxygen and they start to die. And we've, we've documented this in Lake Winnipeg, over a 10,000 square kilometer area in the north face of the lake. And that's how a lake like this can get choked over time. The lake is not dying. Uh, it's changing. And it's changing in ways that are considered to be uh, very negative for the ecosystem. I've uh, lived on the lake all my life. Uh, I've noticed some, uh, some changes over the years. Uh, and uh, certainly when you fly over the North Basin and see the big algae blooms, uh, uh, there's something to be concerned about for sure. So we're feeding the lake and the lake is responding by growing. The, the algae respond, they, they're the primary producers, they're at the base of the food web. Nutrients are food to them, so they grow. So we, and that's probably the most visible consequence of eutrophication are these vast algal blooms that are forming on the lake. And then of course the, the rest of the food web responds because algae are food for zooplankton, which are little teeny animals, and for other organisms in the lake. So the whole food web responds and, and those changes you don't really see. They're not as visible as an algal bloom and that's why we need to study the lake to really understand how the ecosystem is changing. I mean the, uh, the algae uh, uh, reduces the oxygen content in the water, there's uh, toxins involved and uh, as we've seen from the North Basin the, the, uh, the fishermen are having some big problems with the algae blooms and they're losing their nets and so on uh, and, and again uh, this is our watershed, this is our water source so we should be concerned about it. 6.6 .6 million people in the watershed, 5.5 in Canada, 1.1 in the States. And they're scattered throughout a huge, huge watershed, one, one million square kilometers, actually. Uh, Lake Winnipeg is a very important uh, fishery. It supports, um, economically, it's very important for the, not only the fishers on the lake, but the rest of the economy behind the fishery. Lake Winnipeg is an important destination for tourism. It, has, uh, it generates a lot of income for the province and for the local businesses. First Nations have been around the lake for thousands of years and it's a source of water, it's a spiritual place, it's important culturally for First Nations, so there are lots of different ways to look at it. You can even just look at it ecologically. It's, is this the way to, to treat the environment, just um, for our own advantage and, and not think about the consequences of what we're doing? If you live in a city, make sure that your mayor and councillors uh, make sure that the sewage is being treated for nutrient removal tertiary treatment. And Winnipeg's in the process now of having to do that. There's going to be a cost involved. Well, you're going to have to be prepared to pay that. If you're a farmer, use better management practices. Don't put manure on the, on the field late in the springtime when the ground is still frozen because it'll just run off into the lake. If you're a cottager, and there's 10,000 cottages I think around the south end of Lake Winnipeg, if you've got a leaky septic tank, fix it. Uh, if you're a city dweller, don't fertilize your lawn unless you need to because you could just put fertilizer on it, get a big rain, it runs off into the drain. Uh, there are things like phosphate-free dishwashing detergent that you can use as well. It's available. People should do that. But, you know, you can't blame them for not knowing what to do if they don't understand the problem. Uh, there's a larger picture here. It's how we abuse water. We don't think about water uh, and we just carry on and use water as though it's going to last forever and we pollute water as though it'll just be replenished and that's not the case. Water is a finite resource and we have to take care of it. Um, and we need to start to change our thinking so that we do start to take care of it. But government can't solve the problem all this stuff. They have to have the support of the people. So we're hoping, and your, your group is a good example, you've taken the time to come out on board, talk to us, get a feel for what the lake is like, and hopefully leave with a better understanding of what's going on. And as an organization, you're interested in helping to get the message out to more people as well. That's great. If we all work together, we can turn it around. The MGU is involved. We're concerned. We're concerned about the lake. Um, uh, both uh, as, a, as a food source, as a recreational source, as a heritage for our grandchildren. 
um, uh, what do you want to leave behind? What do you want to leave behind for them?